Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to cover lecture eight. Um, so lecture eight uh, basically goes over the first part of chapter five. Um, chapter five is pretty detailed again, and I have broken uh, chapter five into two lectures, lecture eight and lecture nine. And lecture um, and basically chapter five five is is the one from where um, the macroeconomic topics starts uh, like seriously you know so here you will see in chapter 5 so far you have heard the term GDP and inflation but in this lecture in lecture 8 you will learn what GDP means and how we calculate GDP and um, you will also learn a little bit about inflation and in lecture 9 you will learn in details about what inflation means how do we calculate inflation and how do we take out the impact of inflation OK, so again, lecture eight is the first portion of chapter five, and it will basically cover um, GDP and a little bit about inflation. OK, so first of all, what then what is national income accounting? So national income accounting refers to all the methods used to measure the performance of the economy and ev evaluate the economic activity. So basically the different types of methods we use to calculate the eco different types of incomes that is generated in the economy in order to see the performance of the economy and what is the level of economic activity. And based on the current calculation of the national income, you know, and this is important, you know, basically when the government can calculate the national income using different accounting methods, they based on the result, they can implement various types of policies. If the economy is going through recession, then they will implement fiscal policy um, and um, or um, easy monetary policy. On the other hand, if they see uh, the national income accounting is going up too fast, then they will try to slow down the economy because there is too much inflation in the economy. So this number is calculated and it is compared to previous years as well as compared to other countries and using these comparisons the government can decide what type of policies they can undertake in order to improve the performance of the economy and so some of the uh, policies includes monetary and fiscal policy okay so like you know during recessions the government will try to stimulate the economy and during inflation times when prices are going up too high government will try to slow down the economy through various types of policies we're going to learn about these um, things later in this semester but just know that this national income is very important to determine what policies the government can undertake so officially or formally national income accounting is a bookkeeping bookkeeping system or it's an accounting system that the government uses to measure the level of the country's economic activities at a particular point of time so remember this is at a particular point of time let's say as of june 30 2020 what is the national income um, that the country made from January to June okay or it is you know uh, on a particular day like on January 31st 2020 what was the national income made by the country or on December 31st 2020 what was the national income the country made over one year okay so that's the bookkeeping system that we use to track the different types of income generated in the uh, economy and then we use that to see what is the performance of the economy and specifically the national income accounting method or this number is used basically to measure and describe the economic activity based on this number we can say what type of activities are dominant in the economy is it manufacturing is it distribution or is it services so we can see with from which segment or which sector of the economy most income is coming from is it manufacturing is it distributing so it helps us to measure that and determine the uh, economic activities going on in the economy then it also helps us this number we can compare it to the previous years let's say we compare the number of 2020 to 2019 and 18 and see if the number has went up or down if it went down that means the economy is doing bad and government has to take actions accordingly if it went up that means the economy is doing well and that's you know it's it's growing so it's a it's a sign of growth 
it can also be used to compare the current economy with the economies of other countries you know basically we use the national income of the US and compare it let's say with the national income of Canada or national income of Germany and we compare and see you know if there are any caveats or if there are anything any loopholes or any type of weaknesses in our economy that we can adapt based on looking at the numbers of the other countries okay and finally it provides additional information right um, it gives additional information and basis to the government to implement various types of economic policies so based on this number they can implement policies again if they see that the number has gone down over the years they will implement certain policies so that it can stimulate the economy and growth okay and vice versa is also true if the economy is growing too fast compared to the income of the people then uh, the government can take um, or implement policies that will slow down the economy so the various metrics that we use to calculate the national income accounting are gdp gnp and gni you heard about gdp so far gnp is another measure and gni is another measure there are several other measures out there but these are the most common ones gdp means gross domestic product and this is the most widely used metric for national income accounting most countries in the world use gdp to calculate their national income um, and it basically measures the total value of all the final goods and services produced in an economy within a year so in 2020 the us how many goods and services that the us economy produced how many goods and services were produced within the US economy in 2020 that is what is calculated by GDP and it is one of the most famous or most popular type of national income metric and GDP is usually includes monetary value that is generated during a sales transaction for an end users and not at the point before the sale so whenever there is a um, sales transaction that is counted towards GDP let's say if we go to Walmart and buy some grocery of $20 that $20 will be counted to GDP if we go to a gas station and buy gas that will be included towards GDP if we go and buy a car or if we go and buy a home all these things when we when the sales transaction is closed that's when it is that transaction is included in the GDP before I talk um, more in details about GDP, I wanted to give you a little bit of idea what gross national product means. So gross national product means all the, um, you know, all the output or all the goods and services produced by all the US citizens living in the Americas as well as other parts of the country. So this is kind of a broader measure. Okay, so under under GDP, we will only include the goods and services that are produced by Americans living within the boundary of the United States and that's why it's called domestic right within the border within the borders of the United States the 50 states of America if they are producing the goods and services within the United States then it is only calculated now if let's say I am a US citizen but I live in London and I'm making purchases that will not be included in GDP but that will in, be included in GNP which is gross national product so gross national product will include all goods and services that are produced within the borders of the US plus all plus all the goods and services produced by Americans living abroad okay whereas GDP is only the goods and services produced within the US now within the US we can have non US citizens those will be also counted under GDP as well as GNP but GNP in general is a broader term because it includes the citizens who are living abroad and their income and their purchases are also included in the GDP okay so that's the difference between GNP and GNP is basically another type of metric that we use to calculate national income okay so there are basically three ways three methods to calculate GDP the first one is called the value added method or the output method. The second one is called expenditure method and the third one is called income approach method. Okay, and we're going to go over each of these items in details. Okay, so first one we are going to talk about the value added model or the output model model and according to this model GDP is measured <coughs> as the cost to the final user 
or the total value added at each stages for the production participants in production okay so whatever the final cost is when you are buying a product that is your gdp under this value added model so if we are going to the market and if we are buying a laptop for 560 dollars that is the final value that will be counted towards gdp or it is the value that is generated at each stages of production in order to produce that laptop okay so that's what it the value added method says it's either the final cost or the value that is added at each stages of production to produce that product and basically these two are equal the final cost is gonna be equal it will be equal to the summation of all the values added at each stages of production um, and the final cost also means the price that you pay okay so under value added method the GDP is basically the final cost to the end user or the price that the cust customers pay or the value added the value that is added at each stages of production to produce the good okay I want to do an example so it's clear to you guys so you understand how it works there might be a similar type of problem in your homework so let's say we consider this table by sale and value added and then we look at the different stages of production okay now let's say we are looking at furniture we are looking at the final good furniture okay so the first first stage for furniture is farmers they grow lumber they own trees and they grow lumber okay so so from trees they grow lumber now what the farmers will do the farmers will sell this lumber to the craftsman who basically makes you know who will basically use the lumber to create a table or to create a chair and let's say he sells it for hundred dollars okay so if we look at this table what is the what is the cost for the buy of what is the cost for the farmer how much did he buy anything for to produce the lumber the cost is basically zero because he owns for the farmer he owns the tree right he's just cutting the tree and putting his labor to create the lumber right so he did not pay anything um, he, he because he owns the tree and how much did he sell it for he sold it for hundred dollars to the craftsman and how much value was added um, in, in this stage of production it is hundred minus zero so hundred dollar was added at this level of production okay then we look at the next stage now let's say the craftsman already uses the lumber and makes co co converts it into a table so and then the craftsman sells this table to a wholesaler okay so let's say he sells it to a wholesaler for two hundred and fifty dollars so how much did the craftsman buy the lumber for he bought it for hundred dollars so his cost is hundred dollars and then he sold it to the wholesaler for two hundred and fifty dollars okay and so the value added at this stage is hundred and fifty dollars okay then the wholesaler sells the table like he did he, they do packaging and uh, combined with other tables and they sell it for three hundred and fifty dollars oops I'm sorry so the wholesaler sells it for three hundred and fifty dollars to distributors okay or retailers retailers meaning um, entities such as uh, you know IKEA or Nebraska furniture okay so the wholesaler will sell the tables and chair for $350 to IKEA so the cost for the wholesaler is 250 because he paid $250 to, uh, to the craftsman and he sold it for $350 to the retailer so that's it and the value added at this stage is $100 
finally we go to ikea or nebraska furniture and we buy the furniture so the retailer sells us the furniture or the table and chair for 495 dollars okay that's the markup retailer um, does a lot of packaging they give us delivery they will do marketing and all that so uh, they add value accordingly so their cost was 350 dollars and they sold it for 495 okay so what is the value added at this stage the value added at this stage is 495 minus 350 which is 145 okay now we got to have this table completed now let's go back to the value added definition what does value added uh, the GDP means so under the value added the GDP GDP is basically the final cost to the end user the final cost to the end user so basically GDP is 495 or it is the summation so it is either this or it is the summation of all the values that have been added at each stages of production so there are four different stages of production here in order to uh, in order for the table or to, in order for the final product to reach the customer and value was added at each of these stages and when we add these stages uh, when we add these values at each stages of production we end up with the same number 495 which is equals to one another so basically it's the same thing uh, the value added GDP is basically the final cost to the customer or to the consumer or the price that the final or end user pays or it is the value added at each stages of a production um, and all of these results will give the same answer because you see here is 495 here is 495 so it's the same answer answer uh, so that's how we do value added GDP now one thing you remember we will add these numbers we don't add the sales then in that case we don't add these numbers in that case we will be double counting we will be adding these numbers the extra value that has been added at each stages of production in order to get the value added GDP so that is how we are going to calculate value added GDP so hopefully that's clear to you guys so again it says in this slide you will see it says GDP basically is measured by summing the value added at each stages of production or the cost to the final user just the example um, proves this also okay However, there are certain transactions that we do not include when we are calculating the GDP and this is something you have to know. Okay, uh, so we ex it can be some disadvantages or shortcomings of GDP, but there are certain things that we do not include when we are calculating GDP. So what are those? First of all, GDP includes the sale of all new goods and services, any type of new goods that are produced will be our service that is produced will be included in the GDP but it does not include the sale of um, any good that is resold so if we are selling a used car that will not be included in GDP so anything that is resold is not part of GDP okay it's only new productions is included under GDP then goods that are produced outside the economy are not included again I told you this that gross domestic product is anything that produced that is produced within the borders of the US within the uh, uh, 50 states of America anything produced outside of the US is not included in this calculation then illegal sale of goods and services are not counted you know black market they don't report these type of transactions so we cannot include these type of transactions in the market like let, let, let's say you know someone is selling drug um, uh, you know in the drug market and, and that's illegal right but we do not know and if they report it they will be caught by the cop so they don't report it and they are not included in GDP another example would be someone just um, you know uh, receiving income in cash just to avoid taxes we will not know those things so those are not included in GDP so it might be a shortcoming so GDP can be um, the GDP number in reality can be a little bit higher because we do not include certain things 
Um, so, but that's what we are going over now. Okay, and then GDP also does not include any type of transfer payments made by the government. So, if the government is making social security benefit, unemployment benefits, if the government is paying for, um, um, you know, uh, Medicare benefits, so these are not included under GDP. Then intermediate goods that are used to produce other goods are not included. So, you know, the raw materials or other intermediate goods that are used to produce the final goods that will not be included in GDP. Uh, now, this one is important. Stocks sold for ownership exchanges are not included. So let's say I own a company and I have 50% ownership and I am going to sell my 50% ownership uh, stocks. I will sell my stocks to Tom for $100,000. This $100,000 will not be included in uh, the GDP. So any type of stock transaction or any type of transfer of ownership uh, of shares uh, will not be included in the GDP. GDP also does not include or count non-production transactions that includes, you know, public gifts, private gifts, as well as, you know, housekeeping work. These are not counted for. Um, but there is one thing that is included in the GDP, and that's the commission that is generated from the sale of goods. So, so let's say I'm a seller and trying to sell my land and Tom comes Tom, one, Tom buys my land, but there is a broker who helped us to meet and uh, make this uh, transaction successful. And as a seller, I had to pay a commission to that broker. That commission or that income to the broker will be included in GDP. So this is important. It will be in your MCQ for sure. So you must know what items are included and what items are not included in GDP when we are calculating GDP. Okay, so moving on. Now, we initially said GDP can be calculated in three methods of so the value added method, the expenditure method and the income approach method. So now we're going to look at the expenditure method and the income approach method. So under the expenditure approach, GDP looks into the total output for each of the major, major sectors of the economy. So we divide the economy into different sectors and then we calculate the income coming from each sector. And that's how we calculate the um, uh, GDP under the expenditure approach. Now, what are the sectors? So there are four major sectors under the expenditure approach. These are consumption investment government and foreign or net exports okay and we are going to go over each of these sectors so you understand what is included in each and how we calculate the gdp and then we're going to do an example okay so gdp the formula under ex expenditure approach is given by c which is consumption plus i i is investment plus g g is government expenditure plus xn which is foreign or net exports uh, if you see at the bottom of the slide, I did mention that C represents personal consumption, I represents gross private investments, G represents government expenditure, and X and represents net exports. And we're going to go over each of these items now. So C, what does C represent? C represents personal consumption expenditure. Basically, it is the spending of all individuals. It is the spending by individual on households on all final goods and services in the economy in a year. Okay, now... That includes spending on durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. So if you are buying a car, that is included. If you are buying grocery, that's a non-durable good, that's included. If we are buying uh, or if we are paying tuition to study at Richland College, that's a service we're getting and that is included in GDP. So any type of expenditure by individuals or households on all types of final goods and services, which includes durable, non-durable, and services are included under personal consumption. If we are buying a car, that's included. One thing that is not classified under consumption is purchase of homes. Okay, so purchase of homes is um, more like an investment. When we buy a home, we consider it is more like an investment. So this is, it's not because we use it for a long period of time, right? For 30 years or so. So homes are not included under consumption, but any other expenditure we make as consumers are included under uh, consumption. And this is usually the largest sector in the GDP calculation. Okay, so the next part, next one, or the next sector is I, which is the gross private domestic investments. So any type of investments that businesses or producers make within the US are included here. Now this will include investment or purchase of new capital, purchase of inventory, uh, purchase of machinery, purchase of an office building. All these things will be included under 
I or investments okay and again another thing that will be included is the purchase of new homes when we are buying new home we consider it as an investment rather than a consumption so purchase of, of new homes will be included under GDP the third one is G which represents government expenditures and government investments at all levels okay so what it means is it's all the consumption and investments made by the government in the US and that includes the federal government state government as well as the local level governments okay uh, so examples would include if the government is trying to build a highway if the government is trying to build a, a national park or state park these are included under government expenditure and um, ex uh, salaries some um, and investments some other examples are you know the salary of the government employees that's an expenditure for the government government pays the salaries so those are included under G when when government sends government employees for training and the expense on that training is included under government expenditures okay if the government is buying equipment that is included under expenditure okay so these are uh, these are examples of G or government expenditure finally we have net exports net exports is basically equals to exports minus imports and this covers our foreign um, sector which is the last sector exports are basically uh, goods and services that are produced within the u.s but are purchased by foreigners okay not u.s citizens but, but purchased by let's say spain purchased by germany purchased by australia so goods and services that are produced within the u.s but foreign countries are buying their goods so we need to add those to the gdp because those goods were produced within the borders of the u.s so we need to add those okay and uh, but we need to subtract imports imports are basically goods that are produced abroad but purchased by american citizens or people living in the us so, so you know if we are buying um a mobile phone from japan that was produced in japan that would be an import and that should be taken out of gdp and that's why if you see in the calculation when we do gdp is equals to c plus i plus g plus x which is exports minus m which is imports we subtract import from gdp because this is an expenditure that is going to the, the gdp of other countries not the us because the goods were not produced in the us okay so let's do an example we might have something similar in the homework or in the exam and you might need to calculate gdp and using the expenditure approach now remember when I give you a table or when I give you some information make sure you read the question and you understand which approach I'm asking you whether it is value-added whether it is expenditure or whether it is income approach and then using that use a formula to calculate uh, the GDP okay so under the expenditure approach the formula we already know is GDP equals to C which is consumption plus I which is investment or gross domestic investment plus G which is government expenditure and investment plus X which is exports minus M which is imports so I want to write this this is exports and we add that because these goods were produced in the US but purchased by foreigners but we subtract imports because these goods were produced outside but purchased by American citizens okay now let's say I will I, I give you a table and you have this information for 2013 in the US you have this information given total durable goods purchased is one two seven four and let's say this is a sorry one two seven four and let's say this is in billions so let's not think about the billions now let's look at the number then for non-durable goods it's given 7500 then for services it's let's say 2599 okay then we are given with other stuff structures 478 equipment 1200 residential or homes is 425 then we have inventory 48 
then we have federal government 1177 and these are given to you these information are given to you state and local 1846 then we have exports Two two zero four, and finally the last item we have is imports, which is two seven four seven. Okay, so we are given with this table. Okay, and now I ask you to calculate the GDP using the expenditure approach. So we know the formula to calculate GDP using the expenditure approach is given by the C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So let's first calculate C, then I, then G, then X, then M, and then we can compute the value of g okay so based on this information let's first calculate c c means consumption it's the spending by all by individuals and households on all final goods and services and that includes the durable non-durable and services so basically all goods and services produced so uh, are purchased so durable non-durable and services so we will include one two seven four plus seven thousand five hundred plus 2599 now do we include structure no do we include equipment no do we include homes no remember we said we do not include purchase of homes under consumption we include it under investments then do we include inventory no then federal government local government spenders no not under consumption and not exports or imports so that's it so when we add these numbers we have the value of c is 11373 okay the next item is investments okay any anything that the businesses um, spend or businesses purchase okay now structures probably businesses are buying office so these are investments so we will include that equipment businesses are buying equipment and machineries so we need to include that that's 1200 then residential purchase of home that's an investment remember we can consider that as an in investment so we include that and then inventory purchase of inventory is also included under investment and that's it so if we add up these numbers we end up with total investment of 2151 then we calculate g and here g is easy to calculate because we only have two items given we include both the federal government and state government so federal government is 1177 and state government is 1846 so we end up with 3023 we are already given with export we are already given with imports so we do not have to calculate those separately now we have all the numbers ready so we just now put it in the formula and calculate GDP so GDP is equal to C and we know from uh, the answer here C is equals to 11373 okay so consumption is 11373 plus I I is investment which is 2151 plus G G is government expenditure which is 3023 plus exports here your exports are 2204 so we add that minus your imports so we have to subtract this number from this equation which is 2747 and we end up with 16004 billion okay so that is the 16004 and we add the billion because these numbers are all in billion so that's why that's that's how we are going to calculate the GDP using expenditure approach. I will give you the table. You will need to classify each of these items under consumption, investment, government and foreign sector and then calculate the GDP using the expenditure approach. So hopefully that's clear to you guys. So then we move on to the second uh, the, the, the third approach to calculate GDP and that is called income approach. Okay. So that's the third way to calculate GDP. So basically under the income approach, uh, the total expenditures on the economy's output in a particular air, a year is equal to the total income generated by each of the factors of production. So in, under this approach, we look at e, the income that is generated by each of the factors of production. So land, how much rent does it generate? labor how much wages does it generate do it does it generate then capital how much interest does it generate and then an entrepreneurship how much profit does it 
um, um, generate. Now under entrepreneur, we can separate uh, the profit into two parts, which is called proprietor's income and corporate income. Proprietor's income is basically when you are the 100% owner of the uh, business and all the profit comes to you. In that case, we call it proprietor's income. And corporate profit is, let's say, when you have a certain percentage of ownership in the company. Let's say you have 25% and you only get 25% of the total income. So that's corporate profit. You get a portion of the total profits because you are a partial owner of that company. So that's why we break down the profit into co proprietor's income and corporate profit. So when we calculate the GDP under the national approach, we follow two steps. And I want to write it down so it's um, easier to you guys. So step one, and this is income approach, not expenditure or value added. So this is income approach. So step one is to calculate the gross national income. And gross national income is given by rent plus labor. I'm sorry, rent plus wages, not labor, because um, wa wages are earned by labor, not that's not an income. So wages or salary plus interest plus proprietor's income. plus corporate profit so that is the first step we will given these information we will calculate the gross national income in which we add the all the incomes that are generated by the factors of production okay now we move on to the step two to calculate GDP so step two is basically we calculate GDP which is equals to your gross national income which you calculated here using this formula plus we have to add certain items that are excluded from uh, some of these factors of production let's say indirect business taxes we this we earned that income but it was paid away as taxes um, but we have to include it in GDP so that's why we add certain items to GDP and that includes the depreciation depreciation is basically the loss of value over the years let's say you buy a car for 20,000 um, in 2020 then after three years the value of the car goes down to 15,000 you lose 5,000 value because of depreciation because over time you used it you wear out the uh, vehicle and therefore the value has gone down so but we need to include the depreciation of equipment and machinery then we need to add the indirect business taxes plus finally we need to add the NFFI NFFI means net foreign factor income and it is also listed in your slide if you look at it NFFI means net foreign factor income basically this is the difference between the exports of factors of production minus imports of factors of production so it's basically the same thing as net exports so instead of final goods and services we are replacing the final goods and services with factors of production like land capital uh, because we're looking at the factors of production now so maybe foreign countries buy labor from us maybe foreign countries buy materials or land from us or maybe foreign countries buy capital from us so these is export of uh, factors of production and then imports is maybe the as US citizens we buy materials or from um, you know or we, we get labor or we buy labor from uh, foreign countries and that's imports okay so we need to subtract that from the GDP so under the income approach we calculate the GDP in two steps first we calculate the gross national income using uh, the formula rent plus wages slash salaries plus interest plus proprietors income plus corporate profit once we calculate the gross national income then we calculate the GDP because there are certain things that are left out and we need to add those to the gross national income in order to have a true value of GDP so we add gross national income plus depreciation plus indirect business taxes plus NFFI or net foreign factor income now let's do an example so it is clear to you guys how you calculate this um, our GDP using uh, this formula 
So let's say again you're given with a table. Again, these numbers are given to you and we are using income approach. So let's say we are given with wages 3254 is for a particular year, let's say for 2015. Okay. Then depreciation. 400 then indirect business taxes let's say that's 500 then interest income is 530 rental income is 17 Corporate profit three forty one NFFI is twenty and proprietors income is four hundred and three. So now we use this table to calculate the GDP. Again, we calculate in two steps. Step one first. We calculate the gross national income or GNI, which is equals to rent plus wage or salaries plus um, uh, interest plus property income plus corporate profit. Okay, so wages we know we have wages 3254 plus uh, rent, rent is 17 plus interest is interest income, which is 530 plus proprietor's income, which is 403 plus corporate profit which is 341 so we end up with a gross national profit of our gross national income of 4545 then we do step two which is calculation of gdp and we need to include certain factors that were not included so we have to start with the gross national income so 4545 then we need to add depreciation which is here 400 then we need to add indirect business taxes which is 500 and then we need to add nffi which is 20 and we end up with a result called 5465565 billion okay so these numbers were in billions so that's how we calculate um, GDP using the income approach very simple but you just have to follow the steps one thing I want to make sure um, uh, and I want to tell you and I want you guys to understand it so for a particular year no matter which method we use no matter we get use expenditure method or no matter we use a income approach the results that we will get from the expenditure approach for GDP will be always equal to the results that we get uh, from the income approach so even though we use a different methods to calculate the GDP for a particular year the final number the final GDP number for that particular year will be the same no matter whether we use expenditure approach or whether we include use income approach the answer that we get from expenditure approach method will be equal to the answer that we get from the income approach for that particular year Okay, so hopefully that's clear to you guys. So this slide 17 talks about that there are two types of um, uh, entrepreneurs and you know and each of these earn different types of profit and we talked about it. An entrepreneur who starts up his own business will earn proprietor's income. An entrepreneur who invests into someone else's business earn a profit called corporate profit. That's what I explained to you and that's how we split up the profit into two parts. Okay, and this is how it tells you what are some of the factors that we need to add back. You know, it explains depreciation, it explains indirect business taxes, and it explains net foreign factor income, and then we have the formula out there. Okay, there's another term called NDP, and this is also often used to make some comparisons or to look at how uh, the economy is doing in terms of investments uh, specifically. Uh, so you need to know the formula. NDP is given by GDP minus depreciation. So like in the example before, let's go back to the example that we did. We have GDP 5465 and we know depreciation is 45. So if I ask you what is the NDP in this case, if I ask you what is the NDP, NDP will be equals to 5465 minus 400, 
which is equal to 5065 million so that's the NDP that's basically this number is used to see how much of your capital is wearing away how much of the value of your capital is wearing away over the years if the difference between GDP and NDP is too much if the difference between this and this is too much that means your machines are running away or wearing away very quickly which is not a good sign we want the difference to be as less as possible US has the largest GDP in the world China and Japan are the second and the third largest economy in the world you know again as I said most of the um, most of the uh, num most of of the GDP is composed of the consumption sector and 20% is government expenditure um, increases or decreases in consumption affect employment income and output when consumption increases businesses will also increase because they will see if consumers are uh, have demand for their products so they will increase their production which in turn will create more employment okay now investment is also very important and it, it it's a very good indicator of where the economy is heading to in the future um, more investment means more of the economy is expanding that means there more employment and output will be created um, we are going to talk about inflation in details in in our next video lecture and in our next PowerPoint slide which is lecture 9 but I just wanted to give you a slight idea about what inflation means uh, how we calculate it and all that okay so inflation basically refers to the increase in the general price level of an economy over time okay so let's say in 2000 so let's say in sorry in 2012 the price of a pen was one dollars and in 2020 the price of a pen is two dollars so over the years over these years the price has went up and the price has actually went up because of a factor called inflation Okay, so it is the rise in the general level. It is the rise in the level of general prices of goods and services. We can also have deflation, which means the price of goods and services fall over the years. Um, some inflation is good because it gives incentives to the producers to produce goods because their prices are rising. So they get some incentive that, you know, I can make more profit. But too much inflation is not good for the consumers because they're not because their income is not going up at the same rate. So that's when government has to take actions okay now when we compare various numbers over the years whether it is national income numbers whether it is GDP let's say we are comparing GDP of 2000 to GDP of 2019 for the US we have to take consider one base year so let's say 2000 will be the base year and I will tell you or the book or the person or the government will tell you which is the base year and then 2019 is the number that we will compare the base year to right or we will use the number in 2019 to see how much it has grown or how much it has shrunk compared to 2000 okay and when we are comparing it the 2019 number has to be adjusted for inflation okay if we compare the raw numbers the comparison will not be correct the reason is over time prices have also gone up so we need to adjust for that so the number in 2019 needs to be adjusted for inflation so that we can make proper comparison between the base year 2000 and 2019 okay now next class we will see how to do it but you have to know that the way we adjust this is or the way we adjust the number so that we can make comparisons more possible is by computing price index okay so price index is calculating calculated by taking the price of the market basket of the year of interest and dividing it by the price of market basket of the base of year and then multiplied by 100 okay and this is this is again calculated um, and we will use this number to take out the effect of inflation from the um, from the number that we are trying to compare to or from the number of the specific year so again price index is given by price index is given by the formula and it's uh, it's written here price of goods 
or services in a specific or given year divided by price of goods or services in base year times 100 okay now I want to do an example and this is the last thing that will be included in this lecture then we will wrap it up so let's say we are given with the base year okay we, we remember this formula so let's say we are given with the base year okay and the base year is 2000 and in the year 2000 the price of a basket of a non-durable goods. So we take a basket of non-durable goods and we take the average price of the goods and we find out that in 2000 the price of the basket of that non-durable goods is equals to $200. Okay. Now in 2001, okay, the price of the same basket of non-durable goods has now gone up to $202, okay? And we can tell that this has happened because of inflation, okay? Now, how do we calculate price index when we are given with this? So again, we use the formula. Price index is, give, is equal to price of goods and services in a specific year, which is 2001 in this case, divided by price of goods and services in base year, where the base year here I told you already is year 2000. So now we know the numbers, right? So, so price index is equals to 202, which is the price in the given year, divided by price in the base year, which is 200 times 100, and that is equals to 101. So this number is called the price index. Okay, so 101 is the price index and in the next class you will see that how we will use this number to take out the impact of, uh, you know, uh, inflation from GDP numbers um, or, or income numbers so that we can make proper comparisons over the years. Okay, one other thing you want to, I want you to know is from this number you can also calculate the inflation rate currently or in the year 2001. The method is inflation rate is equals to your price index minus 100. Okay, so in this case, your price index is 100, sorry, is 101 minus 100, which is equals to 1%. So there has been a 1% increase in prices from 2000 to 2001, and that's what we see here. Okay, so that's how we calculate price index. That's how we calculate inflation rate. Again, next class, we will see how we will use this number to take out the impact of inflation from various numbers of various metrics, such as GDP, um, our salary, our income, and compare them to the base year numbers. Until then, that's it. You know, we will continue from next class. Hope uh, you can go over the examples and hopefully they are clear to you guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.